I have a diverse background. Um, graduated from UC Davis, uh, 91. Um, worked steel since 86. That's how I paid my way through college. And that kind of blended into to my postgraduate work. Um, I also, in uh, mid-90s, I while recovering from a work work accident, I got my teaching credentials. So I had some teaching background. Uh, not many iron workers taught kindergarten, but I have. <laughs> wow. So, uh, and then 99, I moved to Vermont. My wife's from Johnson. So I moved from, moved, we moved here to raise our family. And um, I've been doing steel work uh, for, for three different companies. Uh, for the last 24 years here in Vermont. I'm currently working for a local company, still full-time. Um, uh, my diversity comes from, I was, I grew up in California. I had a, I was in a lower economical uh, area or, you know, outsiders would probably call ghetto, but I called it a working, working class town, but um And and throughout through my work history, I have uh, quite a bit of interaction with different different uh, city states. Um, while I was working uh, for a company out of Barry, I, I traveled from Poughkeepsie, New York, to Augusta, Maine, um, doing projects, working with contractors in different states, different different counties, and so forth interacting with different unions depending on what state you're from so i'm used to getting getting the job done with different uh different um people involved and like a construction site you know there has to be coordination um scheduling is important and keeping to the schedule so so i'm used to doing that this is the is a the part of that question on everybody's mind and with our continually school population dropping, the answer is not easy for anybody. Um, I know one of my district, one of my towns in my district, Worcester, just fought to keep their school open for another year, and it's it's tough on um, it's those decisions are tough, and they're not always going to be popular, and. Our pathway to making Vermont affordable is not, the answers aren't going to be popular. You know, we can't keep adding to the tax, to the taxes and, and the, and the workforce. Um, something has to give. So the population has to decide what's more important is to, uh, lowering taxes or keeping all the schools open with very small uh, populations in inside of them you know it's it's not a popular decision not a popular choice but i think all of the all of the decisions should be made on the ballot not by our representatives not by two representatives or one representative per district up in mount pillar so any any major decision either on taxes or school closures should be done on the ballot and the people should have a choice because we didn't have that choice the our representatives had the choice for us and they, they didn't bring it back to us and bring it, you know, and inform us. I, I wasn't informed. I'm sure there's, there's ways of being informed, but I think the, I think the uh, population needs to be informed of all the taxes and decisions being made in those areas and put it on the ballot. Let the people decide. That's our biggest, uh, biggest challenge is making it affordable because now that we have our our tax base so high all of our uh, living costs so high how do you go backwards from that it's not a popular way of going you know so even if we maintain our affordability at where we're at now we're still not attractive to the young people so cuts have to be made and they had an outside contractor. I was listening to a report uh, in, in the Burlington Channel. They had an outside contractor trying to bring outside developers in to, to build houses. And they flat out told our, our local governments, 
that it's too expensive to come in here and develop property because they can do it cheaper in different states. So why would they come in here and do it here? So it's going to have to be done local and, and it's expensive. Our material costs, our labor costs are all, all keep rising and adding more taxes and adding more, more fuel taxes is going to just keep the cost going up. And then it's going to minimize the, the opportunities for any of the developments to grow. So affordability is employment and hard work and we have to keep our people employed. And there's so many opportunities right now. There's career opportunities that are available that aren't being filled and we have to fill those and people um, need to see a, a benefit from that. And and taxing them to death is, is not a benefit of working. <laughs> so we have to, uh, we have to check ourselves and make it more affordable. And until we do that, I think the problem is going to continue. And I haven't heard any good answers yet. And there's not going to be any good answers or popular answers to that question. The popular solution is not going to be found in Mount Pillar by our legislatures. They need to get out and look and see the homeless people. Cause every, I was talking to a gentleman who works with the foundation in Mount Pillar that did works with the homeless people and every homeless homeless individual families has circumstances that are attached to that. And the criminals that take advantage of those programs kind of overcloud the, the people that really need the help and, and the, the public image is something we have to turn around and, and the help will, will come because Vermonters help each other. And I tell you what, if we don't get the spending and affordability under control, the ho the homelessness is going to increase because a lot of families are one paycheck away from being homeless. So if we don't solve the problem and work on it together and taxing, taxing the working man is not going to, is not the way to go. Taxing the rich is not the way to go because it just filters down to the, to the working class. Any taxes on on any taxes filter to the working class, and we can't take any more. We can't. We we we're tapped out on taxing, and if, and um, they really need to go out and see each in you know eat, see the homeless and meet them and talk to them and work on solutions together. And there are there are there are people doing that, but. The politicians need to get out there and do it too and meet them and see what the situations are. And, you know, and the answer is probably uh, easier than we think, but, but um, it has to be a two way street though, too. They have to want to get off the streets. And, and some people I, I've, I've dealt with, I've worked with a lot of homeless situations and I did a lot of study in college. I, I went to Berkeley and, and, and stayed on the streets for a weekend and there's a, you know, there's a social connection between uh, between the groups and homelessness and and nobody wants to be homeless, but some people choose that lifestyle. So we have to decide that. I think that's what politicians call unintended consequences. And I think the taxpayer is kind of tired of hearing that. The push for electric vehicles in Vermont with the rural areas uh to any average taxpayer any average working class person is unattainable and that's going to be a problem because it's going to put a, a strain on our grid that we that that the uh, infrastructure just can't handle and our and our six seven windmills aren't going to be able to keep up with it and Vermont doesn't produce any uh major electricity because once the nuclear plant shut down we were kind of rely on uh on quebec hydro quebec for our electricity and that's that's the problem with the electric vehicle situation and the cost and the the, the inability to keep up with vermont's use for our vehicles our tractors and so forth our our big trucks and the, then the weight, the weight of the electric vehicles is, is going to cause more strain on our infrastructure, 
bridges, so forth, can't handle the weight of the big rigs that are going to be going over them with the, with the battery packs. So the complex answer, the complex problem that creates is going to strain our whole system. And, you know, Vermont's can't afford to be the United States experiment. And we need to stop and rethink this whole uh, path we're going down. And that's why, that's why a lot of people that aren't politicians are running now. You go to Hardwick and see what they dredged out of the river uh, right by the bridge on 14, where 14 and, and 16 meet, you see all those trees, all of those, the debris that was clogging up the system. And when that's like a beaver dam. And when the when the dam breaks, it puts a strain on, on everything below it. So going up, going in, uh, north of us and taking down and cleaning up our streams and rivers would be a big assistance in that. And if and if you just drive up through there and check and see how much was in there. Yeah, I don't know if they cleaned it up yet, but it was it was a lot. And that's not only that's just one area of our rivers upstream. So the the maintaining of our streams is important. My answer begins with my grandson was born three months pre premature. So and he's turning he's 17 a senior in high school working at traps productive citizen so as far as abortion that's that's where i stand as far as the legality of it and everything i think the supreme court settled that it's it's up the state it's up to the vermonters so put it on a ballot and 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 let the let vermonters decide and i think that's just the best way to do it so simple answer for me is because we're not going to change the Supreme Court's decision now. And it's up to us. It's up to the state. So top three issues I had going around, because I have a 55-mile route on my trip, my, on my visiting my towns, are taxes, affordability, and safety. Safety is one not a, lot, not a lot of people are talking about. I met with a I, uh, Sunday. I heard a story from a uh, uh, resident of Walden, or uh, Worcester, who was in Mount Pillar Shaw's and and panhandlers uh, hit her up for eight dollars for gas, and she did pay them. She did give them the money, but she felt like they were about ready to pounce on her, and she was definitely scared. And for for our 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 growing aging population, I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm a I'm a target now. You know, our aging populations are targets. And then I just looked up this this fun fact on border crossings on our northern border. And this is just in one in one border station in Swanton, in the uh, Swanton sector. We had 19,222 immigrants caught in Swanton from 97 countries. That's just at one border station. That's not counting the other border stations in Vermont. We don't know who's coming into our state and we need to control that. So safety is a big issue that I think is getting overlooked. And our soft on crime is enabling criminals to continue to uh, threaten our citizens.